Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the final debrief video prior to term test number two. This is a combo debrief video for both chapters 17 and 18, but as I'll discuss in just a moment, we covered much of the uh, frequently asked questions in our review class. Uh, the link for our review class recording that was held on Monday night at 8 p.m. Halifax time is linked up in Brightspace because you need um, our course, kind of our course link in order to uh, get to that just because it was recorded in Teams. All right, so without further ado, uh, chapter 17, as I discussed in that review class and why we went into more depth for chapter 17, our deferred income taxes, or really our income taxes um, chapter, there were a lot of various questions um, and most of the questions uh, could have been answered by kind of linking back to the videos. And I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but what it means to me and what it signals to me is that we were very much um, in the same path uh, when I took this topic in a similar course many years ago. And the fact that I could often kind of do deferred income tax by the end of it, but I didn't understand why and I didn't understand how and I didn't, I didn't fully grasp or really at all grasp until I hit CPA that deferred income taxes was the accounting, the, you know, the economic reality of the difference between the accounting and the tax treatment of these assets or liabilities. So it's the accounting for the difference between accounting and tax. And we have to kind of, I don't wanna use the term match, but we need to reflect the economic reality of the substance of the transaction that created this asset um, or this negative asset, this liability, and reflect that on our financial statements. So I wanted to take some time and go over that kind of live with you guys in our review class and then go through a series of questions. So feel free to check that out. It's about halfway through. I'm also going to link down uh, below the deferred income tax videos uh, for you to review because I think if you go and you do those extra questions now that we're kind of beyond the connect practice problems, um, it's just going to be one of those things where you got to kind of pick, 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 um, you know, write your summary notes, ask questions, email me, um, talk it through. And then one day you'll be like, oh, this kind of makes sense. And then you'll do another question and it'll be like, oh crap, what about this? And then you kind of just have to build on that and it will come, I promise you, it will come and it'll feel a lot less weird just kind of the more that you do it. Okay, so the CPA way, this leads us into our next item here, that our second CPA way wrap up graded question uh, was returned Wednesday morning. And you'll see that we had 72 out of 75 people submit and our grade distribution uh, was as follows. Uh, I reviewed, um, I did a startup with our marker and I reviewed their, uh, their feedback and their assessments and I agree with them. Um, uh, I mean, in my opinion, this is quite the generous uh, grade distribution, but I went in and I made sure uh, they're they were earned. So you work hard, you get a reflection of that work hard. And even if you work hard and you didn't maybe attain your definition of what you were trying to put in, uh, email me, ask. It's it's always worth a question. Uh, I actually, right before hopping on here, just replied to, to a question asking about that and did a little walkthrough. So the grade didn't change, but um, hopefully they have a better understanding of the expectations of how to do a wrap up. And this is a super solid skill that I wish I would have learned when I was in university because it just is about working smarter, not harder. It's not about volume. It's 100% about quality. Okay. So um, leads us into the next um, item, which is our Connect problem set. So the assignment that was due on Monday evening, we had uh, 72 people. So again, we have a few people not submitting. Our average was 90.3. So similar to the debrief, <clears throat> CPOA debrief question, the lowest mark is dropped. So if you, again, didn't attain your definition of success, your definition of what you're working towards, you have the ability to drop this one if you so choose. Okay, 
I had some really great questions about leases, some emails. I have two items um, that I've added to a chapter 18 errata. For those of you who don't know what an errata is, uh, it is a list of um, errors in the materials, errors and or clarifications. So items that I wish um, that I would have incorporated at the beginning before you saw these. So I do this um, out of full transparency because um, did you know that even in like very well published books that are updated a few different times, um, technical texts, there may be, you know, what's acceptable or, or like a good one is a 4% error. So I strive for well, well, well um, underneath that. In fact, I strive for zero. Um, but if there's something that I should have said differently, clarified, or um, you'll see in the second item here, it's flat out just wrong, I will be transparent and I will post an errata and I will let you know. Um, I do this versus switching um, all of the items kind of like during the course for a couple reasons. A, it's not efficient. I want to use my time to address you real time, not to make up my mistakes that I should have, you know, ideally never, <laughs> never said to you before. Um, but also because if you are viewing the materials, how do you know which version you saw, didn't see, you know, the, I really hated when people would update materials and then not let me know, or maybe they'd let me know, but it was in an email or a news post. And there's a lot of communications that go out there. So, Hey, here's a list, you know, scan the materials. Um, is there an errata? Oh, okay. There's an error in there. Cool. Um, <laughs> just out of transparency and out of respect for everybody's time. And of course, if you have a question um, and uh, yeah, feel free to ask. And um, I had one student my very first year teaching this course and she's in the middle of CPA right now. And she caught, I think she caught two errors, um, but she would eat, I think I got about 20 emails from her, like trying to find errors and she made it like a game. And I leap, like I flip in, I, I'm like flipping and freaking, I, Flip and love that because um, she was working so, so hard to kind of get into the materials. And um, yeah, no, she um, she found, well, one error, one clarification. And yeah, just super proud of, of her hard work. Um, and yeah, sometimes, anyways, it's definitely not ideal. Again, myself and our team uh, work very hard. Um, but in chapter 18, um, the annuity due uh, shouldn't be there. So slide five should read, under step two, we use the regular annuity format to calculate the present value. And then on the ASPE video, so the third video in chapter 18, the slide should read, payments are set at 12,000 per year, um, payable at the beginning of the year. So instead of the end, it should be the beginning and then all the numbers work out. So kudos to a student for emailing me about both of these. Um, and yeah, just it shows super big dedication to read, ask, learn, you know, when I'm learning something or when I'm doing something. And um, yeah, I think you put in some effort, but if there hits a point where you're like, hmm, this doesn't make sense, it might, there's a small chance it might be an error. Um, and then there's another chance that maybe you just need to look at it differently, but how do you look at something differently? You you reach out to your resources, your friends, uh, TAs, professors, you know, like you reach out and utilize the resources available to you. All right, so I have uh, summarized um, three of the questions for the FAQ, and then um, we had a lot of questions about how was the CPA way um, interest expense um, and then decrease of obligations. So we will go over that in just a moment. So one of the first questions that came up and this came up in a number of different ways was on an exam, when having to do the journal entries, what types of accounts are permissible? So this question was saying, you know, on, one of, um, on the CPA way question, um, they put their debit as um, a debit to an asset account for the, to reflect uh, the economic reality of the capital lease. And they, I think they said that they, there's a couple of different variations of this question, but this particular student um, gave an example and they said that they went to vehicle expense, but yet um, it was slightly, it was just um, a general asset, pardon me, vehicle, vehicle asset, not vehicle expense. And um, this other 
student said um, that they did essentially the same thing and said, calling it an asset, but didn't become as specific as saying a vehicle. So the thing is, when you're doing this, when it is a CPA way question, meaning you don't have a chart of accounts, meaning you don't have a list of all the permissible, um, permittable accounts, then do your best to demonstrate competency. You know, be specific. Um, the journal entries have three main parts, the account, the numbers, and the explanation. So as long as you're communicating effectively and demonstrating competency, that you know it's a capital lease and that it's a vehicle or it's an asset, like you are, you know, there's, all of this is professional judgment. So I would say that in the CPA questions, just like in real life, just as in uh, assignments that you are going to see in future courses, <laughs> I can promise you, um, being as specific as you can to demonstrate the competency, but then letting it go, you know, be like, okay, did I demonstrate competency? Did I demonstrate the fact that I understand this is an asset account for a capital lease? In an exam, um, especially when you are given a chart of accounts, use the chart of accounts. And, you know, again, you now you're demonstrating competency, but you're given kind of an assist, you're given a resource that adds, um, adds a level of precision that is required. So I hope that helps kind of bl um, blend in when there's different um, tools or resources and um, questions, kind of how to demonstrate competency in either, either areas. Uh, the big thing is, uh, of the people um, that asked this question. I love that we're getting into the finer nitty gritty to really dig in and refine. So these are next level questions, which is awesome. Okay. When recording a, our next question, when recording a capital asset, why do we present value all of those lease payments and not put in the full value? So meaning the full like nominal value. So if it's, you know, thousand dollars a year and the market interest rate is five percent and it's a five-year lease why do we present value that five thousand per year down to year uh, year zero why don't we just record five years times a thousand dollars so that is a great question and it's all how you look at the past present future which by the way this um one of the students that referenced this discussed, um, you know, well, the $5,000 reflects the full value of what will be going out. Yes and no. So we need to ensure that we present value back to today's dollars because $1,000 in a year is, is worth, um, it's not worth the same, obviously, but when we present value back, what we're saying is, well, okay, this just so, um, say the present value of $1,000 in a year is nine fifty. So what we're saying is, okay, we're paying out the value of that $1,000 in today's dollars is nine fifty. but so when we pay it out, $50 reflects the passage of time, reflects that financing, um, because we don't have to pay out $1,000 in today's dollars. We're paying out $1,000 in tomorrow's dollars, which is actually worth less. So we're going to reflect the economic reality of this liability, this liability that's the result of a past transaction, right? We signed the lease that present, uh, represents a future outflow of economic resources um, that we presently can't get out of, which is $950 today and $1,000 tomorrow. So that $50 difference reflects the passage of time the time value of money, and that reflects the financing or the interest charges. So we can't we can't record the full thousand dollars because the passage of time hasn't occurred. So the economic reality of the passage of time shouldn't be reflected on our financial statements. I hope that gives a different perspective to look at it. Again, happy to, to talk this out. Sometimes it's nice just to book office hours to kind of hear yourself talk it out loud. And then this is one of those like light bulb, like aha, economic reality, dang it. <laughs> All right. So CPA questions. A lot of people liked um, getting into this analyze or for me um, uh, advise, and I love this because you know it's all fine and dandy to be able to address users' needs when they ask you for things, um, but really the conclude and advise is giving people that thing that they really should have been asking, or you know using your expertise 
you know, what's the bigger picture? What are the bigger implications? Like, how can we use this strategically? Because, and I know that some people will be like, strategy, that's that other class that I'm taking this semester. But no, like what we're doing here is strategy. We're trying to figure out what are the rules of the game so that we understand how to play them now, but perhaps we can figure out the chess game for the future. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, when would we recommend a capital lease? If we, um, okay, uh, it, there's a couple different items. What if we are a subsidiary of another company and we charge a management fee to our parent company and that fee is based off of assets under management? Oh my goodness. I will be, um, you know, trying to make every, if I'm under asset fee, every lease, um, that I can, a capital lease, right? Because then that would increase our assets and then increase our management fee that we'll be getting from our parents and that will increase our net income and i'm just assuming that because we are you know getting this great management fee that our bonuses are based off of something income based so that would be an example of when we would um, want to recommend a capital lease um, other areas that we might want to recommend a capital lease, um, and meaning like how do we structure the deal in such a way that under ASPE it would um, have to be classified as a capital lease. <laughs> um, man, I really like that assets under management one. Anytime where really we are <clears throat> wanting to make our assets as um as big as possible and we're not really getting penalized for our for our uh liabilities perhaps um it is one of those issues where the lease expense so if it were under operating was like really big but if we capitalized it there's a really long like amortization that we could take advantage of so if we are management and we are getting bonuses based off of net income, essentially say there was $200,000 a year in lease expense, or um, we could, you know, do a straight line amortization or, ooh, even, um, oh my gosh, um, even amortization on the asset based off of um, units of production. And we do the calculations and we're like, okay, sweet. So it'd be 200,000 expense for the lease payment, um, but like $50,000 or $20,000, or like, we'll just like produce like very minimum this year and have like $10,000 um, this year and kind of F with our, um, our depreciation expense. Um, I'm not saying this is good. I'm not saying this is good or recommended, but I'm saying if we understand the game, that is the underlying financial statements, how to build them, and then we understand people and their motivations, why might somebody want something to look a certain way? Then we can take a step back and say, okay, what is the economic reality? What is fair and appropriate? Um, because as a CPA, as a Dal County grad, I'm gonna have to sign my name to this. My signature is my word and my integrity does not have a price. Um, and just understanding where the human um, inclination may be for that. So fantastic questions. I, I'm gonna have to introduce a new word that's like the a, a, a combo between flippin' and freaking, but this has been fabulous. Like I'm loving these next, next level questions. Like how does this integrate? Where might humans try to F with this? Okay. And then the last one, this was pretty overwhelming, um, as in um, very prevalent in chapter 18. So how was um, that lease calculation um, calculated? So remember, um, I provided in the notes, um, you know, a simplifying item that if you are in a case and you are like, there's no way in heck I can do this entire table, Pardon me, it's like in, you are in a case question. Say you have 15 minutes to do that CPA way question. By the way, um, not to scare you, but it's like a motivating goal. Uh, a length of question that long would typically in CPA in core one um, should take you 15 to 20 minutes to complete. So if that just made you be like, how the heck do I do that? Sometimes you look at the bigger picture and say, how can I demonstrate competency? 
And um, that's when you would use the simplifying assumption that I provided in the comment bubble. However, you know, there's different users, different needs, different requirements. If it's a CPOA case question, um, you have to think about who are the users for my needs? How is this being assessed? Whereas if it's a connect, you know, technical or more of a task-based simulation, more of a um, computer um, algorithmic question, which both are fair game in CPA right now, um, then the precision is the name of the game. So if precision is the name of the game with the connect practice problems. There is no ability to demonstrate overall competency and, you know, make simplifying assumptions like we, like I mentioned in the CPA way questions. Okay, but coming back to this, and why is this here? Uh, so a number of students asked, hey, how did we get to that debit of, that debit of um, 15.35 and the debit of 11.05 for interest expense. And that is because this question had it compounding monthly. And that's why we had to do uh, the entire lease amortization schedule per month. And so what we do is we take the balance of our balance under lease obligation and we, oh, <laughs> times it by our 1%. And um, that's actually going to lead us, that little bark in there is going to lead us to our next part. So take our balance of our lease obligation. So this would be a credit on our financial statements times it by um, our first month's interest rate, right? Because it compounds monthly. And so 9,900 times 1% equals $99. And so that means that of this monthly lease payment, $220 um, was paid. 99 was interest. 121 was the reduction of the lease obligation. And so then we get our balance of the lease at the end of month one, and we do it again, reduce, um, offset um, the amount that's attributable to the expense. The remainder goes to reduce the lease obligation and we go so on and so forth. So then at the end of the year, we add up all of our interest expense and we add up the reduction of our lease obligation and that is how we get our um, debit to obligation under lease and our interest expense here. Okay, so fantastic questions and thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your hard work, all of your debriefing, all of your, and I say hard work because it is, it is hard work, especially keeping up with this chapter after chapter after chapter. And I'm really hoping that um, the way that the course was designed um, with the progression of topics as well as, you know, our pre-work, our videos, our ability to work three weeks on kind of one week to solidify, three weeks on, one week to solidify, um, and then one week on, one week off for re reading week, and then two more weeks, and then a week to solidify, um, three chapters. It's it's tricky stuff. It's not easy. Nobody said um, it was going to be easy. All we said is it's going to be worth it. So after the test uh, this week, you'll be two thirds of the way down this course, and I am proud of you for the effort that you have put in. Okay, so now I want to walk you through our midterm survey results. Okay, we are in Survey Monkey. You get to see the other side of it. Okay, so this is the one that you filled out. We had 24%, pardon me, 24 out of our 75 students um, fill this out, and about one minute was spent on each. So thank you. That's um, much less than my three to five minutes. Um, that I threatened you with, so it worked out three questions. So the first question was focusing on which delivery method do you prefer when focusing on effectiveness of your technical content from COM 3111. And so we had about two thirds prefer synchronous, asynchronous, so what the majority of the course is, about 20%, um, so one fifth of students preferred synchronous, and um, about the, the remaining 12%, 12 and a half percent, um, had no preference or weren't sure. So I'm really hoping um, the way that this course was developed was to have a base of asynchronous, and that's in line with the 
um, the literature that I mentioned um, above. So that the having the base of our um, materials being asynchronous so that you can work on it on your own time, but then having our synchronous review sessions, uh, our Calendly office hours, I must say, I have a standing, um, basically a standing weekly uh, appointment, sometimes uh, twice a week, with uh, one student, and it is absolutely lovely. It's a great way to start um, one of my weekdays. And um, they had mentioned not you know, being um, being concerned with the asynchronous or, you know, just saying that there wasn't a physical class. So make this what you want it to be. I am here and I'm available. And if you want to make this a bit more synchronous, have at her, you know, I am here and I, it is absolutely delightful. Okay. Now, considering um, the next question was asking about the availability of resources, and I am so sorry, the way that I um, structured this. I don't know why, it, and I did this before, and I apologize um, why essentially it provided this matrix um, structure. I do know why. It's because I selected matrix and not just, you know. Um, but hey, we're all human. So this is um, based on the people that said um, that we had people either Okay, that's 100% of this. So what that means is we had, oh, how do we interpret this? So we had 21 people that said that they agree that um, that there was uh, sufficient, that they feel like the support um, is at a minimum reasonable. We had 21 people agree, uh, nobody, um, and then we had um, three people neither agree nor disagree. So again, for formative purposes, I, I appreciate the feedback and what I even more more so appreciate or in addition to appreciate is that um, a lot of you took time to leave um, comments so thank you um, we had some people not being a super big fan of the CPA way questions and then we had um, a few people yes yeah, so another CPA way question and then we had another per person where was this? Um, where the CPA way assignments, they really liked it. Um, and, you know, providing those types of items here. So we had a couple questions. Um, I received one comment here, as well as one person via office hours asking for more practice problems. So that's why you will see in uh, our Connect, I, in addition to our our practice problems um, being available again after the due date, there's additional practice problems um, in Connect for the term test. Um, so a friendly reminder, there's also the extra uh, tutorial videos, so you can find those in our um, in our content under Brightspace and just like scroll down towards the bottom. Okay, um, so CPA way wrap up and the video. So kind of what I'm doing right now, um, listen, and I will tell you that um, I was always very focused on doing, 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 and not reflecting. And the literature supports that it is that quiet time. It is that time where we have to kind of like bring it all together and kind of solidify it. That really ensures that what we learned or what we thought we learned before, it sticks in there and its ability, you know, for us to retrieve. So, um, so first of all, like, thank you. And, <laughs> um, and if there's a way in which you feel like you can make the CPA wrap ups and these videos more meaningful to you, you know, let me know. Um, if you do not like debriefing, um, I would say I get you. I, I, I understand, um, my job as an instructor, it's to take a look at the literature, um, look at the evidence that's out there and, and hope that I've earned a little bit of your trust so that even if there are things that you um, don't think are necessary, you know, maybe just invite the process. And because I'm here to help you um, the way that you, you know, help or assist or provide a platform for you to master the materials uh, in the way that will serve you, not necessarily the way um, that we, we always like. So absolutely open to feedback. Um, 
you know, let me know how it can be more meaningful to you. Did you like the debriefs where I have guests on? I have like two, three meetings every week with the CPA. I don't always know if I should be bringing them on or not. Um, so my next question will be focused on, um, you know, another question was asking for more connect. So absolutely. Um, yeah, let me know what you would like with more of these guests. And that um, leads me to the next part. So if you have more items that you wanna see in your debrief videos, these videos, <laughs> um, I also would say that uh, judging by the numbers, um, about half of you watch them and that's okay. Um, like, thank you if you're watching this, thank you. Um, but you know, absolutely give me some feedback on how to make this more meaningful for you. Um, and if you have any questions that you want me to ask guests, if you have any ideas for guests, you know, who do I talk to on a weekly basis? Um, contractors, I have one uh, CPA Way educator. Uh, she is a team lead for the National Marketing Center uh, for the day two uh, t assurance case. She lived in, she's lived in Hawaii on an island. She's lived in New Zealand. She's now in Washington state. And this summer they bought a boat for $500, fixed it up and are going to be like boating around their, their like little lake there. Um, you know, we, there's, so we have, um, people that have worked in firms, people that worked in industry, people that have worked in government, um, people that are partners at mid-sized firms, people, um, uh, gosh, that um, work in different government offices. So if you have somebody or some type of person or something that you are are curious about, just send me an email, comment down below. Uh, and absolutely, people want to talk to you. People love um, to share their experience and to hear from you and to help you because they know that um, learning, you know, admitting that there is a gap between where you are and uh, where you want to be and having support to get there, um, yeah, like we care and there's a whole bunch of people out there that care and want to help you too. Okay, so I want to end this video with um, just saying thank you. Thank you for your participation. Thank you for your kind words. Um, thank you for um, fitting up with a little Barky Bambi uh, just pictured here in the screen. Uh, sometimes videos or uh, during our, our bi-weekly huddles. Uh, so also thank you um, when I introduced that I would be having a new member of the family. So when little Guinness uh, Guinness the French Bulldog arrives uh, mid-December. Uh, a number of you reached out and said, "Hey, I look at look at me, look at Ani, uh, super super cute, and thank you for sending me pictures." Like I cannot like just like little oh, I am allergic to cats, but um, there's also um, um, other kitties uh, that I've got to see during uh, calendar office hours. And I just want to like, oh, they're just so sweet. So thank you, thank you. Um, so nice to see Ani. And another student um, sent me a picture of her puppy. Um, oh, there's Bambi right on cue. Uh, so best part of uh, 2020, she said, I would agree, like, oh, like look at the love, look at the happiness. Like this is, this is it, this is joy. So thank you. Um, thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your pictures. Thank you for your engagement. Uh, and overall, just thank you. Thank you for investing in yourself and, I hope you have a lovely day and all the best on Thursday. Bye guys.